I'm titling this, There Are Two Churches in the World. There are two churches in the world. Both are similar and very different. They have different focuses, goals, opinions. They view heaven and earth differently. I'm, and I'm talking about born-again Christians, born-again spirit-filled Christians. There are two separate churches that are coexisting in the world. You can't always see all the differences clearly from the outside, but God sees them clearly because he looks on the heart and the inside and the motives. Their understanding of why the church exists is different. Please hear me. Please listen. There are two different churches. I don't mean two denominations. I mean the universal church of born-again, saved Christians. There are two different churches in the world. Maybe there's 20, but I'm saying there's two different ones. There are definitions and ideas about sufferings and relationships and priorities, and time, and their checkbook, or visa cards, um, their phone, their work, their habits, their prayer life, how they view God, how they view culture. They're different. Revelation 12.5, this is not a picture of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. This is, Revelation 12, is a picture of the final birthing of this church that has been a longing in the hearts of God's people. And God says, I'm going to have a church eventually. And it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It doesn't matter if anybody else out there believes it or not. It's going to happen. Because right now it seems utterly impossible that this church is actually going to come into being. And it's not going to be the whole church, but it's going to be the whole church that is this man-child that's mentioned here. And what I mean by that is the visible church is carrying an invisible church inside of her, and that church wants out, and the visible church wants that new remnant church out. Neither one is comfortable with the other. And the woman in this picture is the visible church that the world sees, even the evangelical, born-again, spirit-filled church. But within there, in the womb of that church, is a child that God is going to birth. And it's going to happen on the same principles and parameters as the birth of Christ and the creation of the world. It says in Genesis 1, God's spirit hovered over this chaos, tofu, bofu. You look out at the church sometimes, and it looks like Genesis 1. There's a lot of chaos, darkness, confusion. But God's spirit is going to hover, and that's when the creation happened. And it says the Holy Spirit of God hovered over Mary, and she brought forth Jesus Christ, this holy thing, as it says. And God is going to, at the end of the age, hover over this visible church, and she's finally going to birth this child. And these are the two churches that are coexisting in the world right now. So it says, she gave birth to this male child, man child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. That is the rapture of the church right there. And people say, well, it says ruling with the rod of iron. That has to be Christ. No, Revelation 2, 26 and 27 says, if you overcome, you get to rule the nations with a rod of iron exactly as Jesus. And that's not a surprise. Why? It says, if we suffer with him, we also will get to reign with him. A lot of, in the one church, they don't want to say how we get to rule and reign at their charismatic convention, they just want to say, woo, we get to rule and reign with Christ. But that's not what it says. If you suffer, you will reign. Remember, they view suffering differently, these two churches. This is the, the picture of these two churches. So 
They can't stay joined or both of them will die. A child can't live inside his mom for 43 years. <laughs> Not going to happen. As the intensity increases in this world, it's also going to increase in the church. And I believe there's coming a day up ahead where there's going to be a civil war within the church. And it will be bloody, painful, blaming, hurtful brother against brother. It talks about it in scripture, your brothers who cast you out. And they were saying, let the Lord be glorified. Do you know there were thousands of Anabaptists after Luther received the revelation of justification through faith and salvation by grace, then as the light of God kept, began to open up more and more truth, they began to see, oh, we have to be immersed. That's what real baptism is, not sprinkling a baby. It means after you get saved, you get immersed. And so they began to immerse. Thousands of them were drowned by their brother Christians because they were going against tradition. Astonishing. And there are many of these things that are going to happen, I believe, in the future. I, I want you to know there were two trees in the garden. There were two rivers, the Euphrates and the Jordan, very symbolic. There were two parts of Israel, the northern backslidden church and Judah, the spiritual, more of a heart after God. Of course, both of them ended up in failure, but they were very different. They're a picture. There were two groups of disciples. You see it over and over and over and over. And Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. And Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration and only invited Peter, James, and John. That's not fair, Jesus. What about the other poor nine guys that are staying back and don't get to go? There's two churches. And he points it out to us over and over in many, many ways in the scripture. And finally, in the book of Revelation, there's two women. There is Babylon the Great, the harlot, spiritual system that's existed from clear back at Nimrod and Semiramis, his wife, promiscuous, got pregnant, and, well, Nimrod's going to kill me, so she said, the gods impregnated me. And so the mother and child religion started clear back there, and it's still going today, the mother and child. And the bull, the ball, Baal and the bull, the golden calf. Why did, I remember in Sunday school, why did they make a golden calf? Because it was the bull and they couldn't get it out of their system. And that false system's run. It's gone all the way down through history. That's the harlot. We see it now in the new age movement. And we still see it in the Catholic church. And I love Catholics. I despise the religion because it's no different. All of the roots are in paganism. And it's a false marriage. That's the harlot. But oh, there's something else. There's the bride. The bride of Christ. Hallelujah. And today in this world, there is a Philadelphia love of the brothers church and the Laodicean church. And they're moving side by side. But God is going to bring a separation. The world is going to become a less and less friendly place, in case you haven't noticed. Well, this is a shock. No, it's not a shock. Jesus said, wars, rumors of war, and you and lawlessness is going to actually come to the full, like a cup overflowing with lawlessness. And I remember maybe a year or so ago, I was minding my own business, and as clear as a bell, I saw that Every single part of our society is lawless. Education, finance, health, politics. Think of something in our nation. It's utterly corrupted and lawless. The courts, the DAs, the church in many ways. And then he says, and because of all these things, many are going to be offended. 
in Matthew 24, 6 through 13. And they'll actually betray one another and hate one another. These are brothers, believers. Many false prophets will arise. Do you know where most of them come from? Out of the church. John says they went out from us, but they weren't of us. And I, I see so much of that in the church happening now. It's very horrifying. It's sad. It's not like gloating. Yeah, see, now there's more. No, it's horrible. It's sad. Luke 21, 17 through 19. Hated of all men because of my name. Why my name? Because of what it represents. But by your patience, possess your soul. Luke 21, 28, when these things begin to happen, they're in the tiny warm-up stage right now. But now that they're beginning to happen, you've been, the Greek word is unbend yourself and look up. Anakupto, unbend. 2 Timothy 3, 1, isn't this beautiful that God warns us? There's a saying I think is very profound. To the blind, everything is abrupt. It, it's all, but God gave us eyes because of his word. Listen to this. But I want you to know this, that in the last days, perilous times, fierce times, same word used for legion. He was fierce, broke chains, same word. Fierce times are going to come. I didn't write this. God wrote this. Men will love themselves. Lovers of money. Think of, you ever notice these things? Boasters, proud, blasphemers. We, we played that tape of Yuval Harara. He blasphemes like no one I've ever heard. It, it's shocking. And he's brilliant. And he's only sold 45 million books. And Gates and... Zuckerberg and many of them are calling him the prophet. And I, I don't believe he's the Antichrist. I'm simply saying he is a very good forerunner. Maybe he is. I don't know. Slanders, no self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Watch the news. They despise anything that's good. They, they literally choke on it. They love pleasure much more than God. But they have a form of godliness, but they deny that it has any power. And you know what he says? From such people, turn away. Don't hang out with them. Don't become embedded with what they are. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2. The Spirit expressly says that in the last times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, actual demons, and doctrines, teachings of demons. I listened to Andy Stanley. He is beginning to bring forth teachings of demons. Pray for him. I'm not mad at him. My heart breaks. He is going into deception along with many, many others. I mean, gross deception. So much so, like, I can't believe this is what he's actually saying. And many others. So note this. And, and it says their consciences actually get seared. I've been around people that used to know God and their conscience has gotten seared. And they don't even feel anything. They don't feel anxiety or anxious or... Like oh, like, oh, I need you. No, they're very fine. They're comfortable. Note this. In the last days, there will be teachings that don't come from the human realm. This is important to really get God's word. They come from a demonic realm, and they're being taught in the church to the people of God. That's a pretty big thought. But here's good news. 2 Timothy 2.9, Paul says, I'm suffering 
trouble as an evildoer, even to the point that I'm in chains. I'm in prison in chains. But the word of God is not chained. The word of God is, is going to prevail. And like these, this beautiful couple worshiping, he's raising those up all over the world. His spirit's moving. It's not like there's nothing happening. We should not be discouraged. God is going to win. So it's not reasonable to fear, even when we're partaking of sufferings, if we're doing it according to the will of God and walking in it in the power of God. First Peter says, and this, this is another false teaching. First Peter says, it's possible to suffer in the will of God. Much of the church says, if you're suffering, you're out of the will of God. That's a lie. Can you put that verse up there, Echo? Because I, I think some don't believe me. They're, they're upset with me right now. Um, and then 2 Timothy 3.12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But Acts 5.41. They left. They got beaten really badly. The three or four apostles. And they left the council rejoicing that they had been counted worthy to suffer for his name. They suffered for his name because it's the name represents everything that Jesus is. First Peter 5.10 But may the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus <clears throat> after you've suffered a while Oh God, why did you put a comma and add that clause? It was going so swimmingly. But he has called us to eternal glory. But after you've suffered a while, to establish, strengthen, and settle you. Romans 8, 7, you're an heir of God. Chew on that. You know, they gather around the lawyer, salivating the family. What are we going to get, you know? We're going to gather around a throne and we're going to throw all of our crowns down and say, we're not worthy of anything and God's going to go, ha, let me show you what your inheritance is. And I, uh, I was with a beautiful man of God, a year older than me, when he was 20 years old, his last year in the, in the Navy, he began to seek God. He began to be drawn. He said it was in the summer and he just he was getting up by himself and praying. He said, I had such an urgency, such a burn. I just, I knew I needed to hear from God, to get something from God. And so he kept praying. And then one night he had a dream. He said, it's the only dream or vision like this I've ever had. He knew it was from God. It was like a vision dream. And I, I won't go through all the details, but in a moment of time, God showed him in this dream Everything he'd suffered, you know, supernaturally. In a second, he saw everything in his life, how he got hurt, burned. You know, he's only 20, so it probably was only an hour and a half movie. But, you know, um, but he saw it all, felt it. And then God showed him it was a little tiny thimble full of suffering. Tiny. He said, I saw it. It was tiny. But here's what was awesome. I got cold chills, and it was 80 degrees. He said, then I saw God pour it out. And instantly, he was engulfed in glory. He said, Jamie, I don't know how to describe it. It was glory, and then glory, and glory, and rewards, and glory. He said, I can't even describe it. It was a tiny thimble of suffering. And he said, from then on, I feel like yelling at the saints, stop it. You're suffering. It's okay. You don't want to stay there and go, oh, I'm going to just... No, but if you suffer, it's a thimble. And when it's poured out, he said it was like an explosion of glory, just saturating him, overwhelming him. Hallelujah. I mean, God makes sunsets. Can you imagine how he's, what his inheritance is for the saints? It says, it, this is what it actually says. It will take all of eternity, God says, for me to show you my kindness. That's a trip I want to go on. I really mean that. Well, 
we're going to have to stop for now. Uh, we're going to pick this up in our next video. And I am so excited that you have been able to tune in. I promise you, God has really bigger things than you thought. So click down there to the next video. Like us, love us, forgive us, bless us. All right, see you next time.